Hey, hey. So I'm just going to give you a little walk around of my uh, trailer with my new Renogy solar setup. It's the uh, 200 watt kit with the flexible panels and it comes with the it comes with the 12 volt DC to DC charger and it's the MPPT unit as well. So it handles the charge from the solar panels as well as the charge from the, the battery of your uh, towing vehicle as well. So I'll just kind of run through uh, my setup. I've just kind of, I haven't fully installed everything, but uh, I've laid everything where it needs to be, including the panels on the roof, ran the cables, uh, snaked them down, uh, drilled my holes, came down through the floor and into my little cubby, uh, into my little uh, storage space where I'm keeping my battery and the charger and the inverter. And so uh, here's my rig. This is the this is the trailer. It's just a little uh, 13 foot, and uh, done a little bit of work to it. Still a work in progress, and working away at the inside now too. But uh, this is it. And really, my biggest um, it's kind of messy right now. My biggest uh, <clears throat> concern was I want to be able to run this fridge. Um, I want to be able to run this fridge, which is a 110, and I want to be able to do that off-grid, obviously, uh, as well as run a few other things, but uh, nothing too crazy. The fridge is my most important thing that I want to run off-grid because, obviously, I want to make sure that I can keep all my food and drinks cold while we're camping if we're off-grid. So my biggest concern was, will this 200-watt kit keep the fridge cold uh, and not deplete the battery and so what I've done is I'll show you my setup I'm just gonna throw the ladder up here just one second so I'll show you the setup here get up on the roof and so there's my two solar panels the flexible kind. I just have them laid out right now. Just making sure everything works once it's hooked up. And then I'm going to go the route of, you know, putting silicone and and, uh, and mounting them or securing them. And I just like that idea because I didn't want to drill into the roof. And so I figured this was the, the better way to go rather than drill in brackets and mount them. I just like the idea of the flexible panels. As you can see, I just ran the wires up and under this vent, which goes down and opens up to this compartment here, which is behind the fridge. So you see the back of the fridge there, a little vent for the toilet, and it just goes up and you can see my cables coming down through there. So I bring them down and then I just feed them down this hole that's already cut out. It goes down through this space here behind the wall, which there's a, a cabinet there, which I have some of my, uh, I have the converter and my breaker box and uh, my 12 volt, my 12 volt fuse panel in there as well. And then, so what I did was I kept going down drilled my hole through the floor, ran the wires up, and then this is my, and then this is my little storage box where I've put my battery and inverter and the charger. So there's the 12 volt to 12 volt charger and MPPT. You can see the solar light is just flashing there. Battery light is green which means the battery's all topped up and it's good. I got the inverter on. So my solar wires uh, come up through the floor over there. They run around behind the battery and then they hook up to the charger. You can see the positive there. Mark the end of it in red. Because both cables are black, which I found kind of funny. The negative is over here. And so the charge is coming through the charger and then running out to the to the battery and then
And then from the battery, the cables come over here to the inverter, switches the uh, current to 12 volt, and then out from there, and I have this cord running and going behind my, uh, my fridge up there, which is plugged in. So that way with this setup, I can run my consistently or constantly run my fridge as long as it's sunny out anyways. And that's what I wanted was to be able to be off grid, running the fridge, keeping everything cold and not having to be plugged in. And so far it looks, uh, so I pulled it out this morning at around 9.30. It's been pretty sunny all day. It's been like 25 degrees and clear skies. And it's been holding, uh, so I, when I first turned the fridge on, I think it draws a little bit more, and I do have the Bluetooth uh, module for it as well, and I'll show you a screenshot of that. But it came up on my phone, and I could see that the fridge was drawing a little bit more current when I initially started it up, and I think it draws a little bit more power to get to temperature once it's at that operating temperature. Then it, you know, kind of levels out and draws a little bit less, and so. It is, what time is it now? It's 3 o'clock. It's been running since like 9.30, 10 o'clock. And the fridge inside is at its proper temperature. And the battery has been at 100% um, for the last few hours. So I know that, yeah, with full sun, it's topping up the battery and uh, giving it enough, uh, enough charge that it can, the inverter can run the fridge and sustain itself and not deplete the battery so uh yeah i mean i kind of had my fingers crossed didn't know exactly i was doing a little bit of research so um i, I had a feeling that that it would sustain and, and be able to handle it but until you get everything hooked up it's hard to know um so yeah i'm uh yeah so far this is my first first day just kind of trying it out i'm going to go ahead and uh finish installing the panels up there I'm just kind of putting little cable ties and stuff on the on the cables running into here. I'm going to clean up my little battery box, and uh, that's it. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, with things so far. It looks like it's going to work. It looks like it's going to do what I what I hoped. And uh, so yeah, if you're looking at getting that kit, um, so far I give it a thumbs up. It's doing what uh, what I needed to do, and I'm hoping that I can just run some you know little phone chargers and you know some some lights here and there. Uh, once obviously we go through the night, that'll be kind of interesting to see how much it depletes the battery overnight. And then can the solar keep up, you know, top up the battery the next day or will it fall behind? Um, yeah, that's yet to be seen, but for now, um, I got through the first day and that's good. So now with this controller, I haven't hooked up the uh, power from the alternator yet, which will uh, come here to this connection here, so you can see it. And so I kind of have everything sort of temporarily laid out and set up. I'm gonna, you know, make sure this is all kind of nice and neat once I know everything is working. And the last thing that I have to do is figure out how I'm gonna bring my power back from my vehicle, because my the vehicle has the seven pin harness, which does bring 12 volt power back, but I believe it runs through a 20 amp fuse and the wires just aren't that big. So right now that does run to my battery, but really that, I, you know, I, I don't think it provides a lot of power. Um, so I have to figure out whether I'm gonna keep it like that or whether I'm going to run a larger cable from my battery in the truck bring it back and maybe do like an Anderson connection or something at the rear bumper that I would hook up when I'm using the trailer and then bring that larger wire into this little space here hook it up as my <clears throat> alternator power and then let the charger pump uh, more voltage to the battery and then I've been Doing a little bit of research and I heard it's a good idea to have a on off switch or a shut off for both of those the vehicle power and the solar power as well so that you can kind of pick and choose which if you wanted to switch from one to the other or just reset and turn everything off 
So I have yet to kind of figure out how I'm gonna bring that power from the vehicle. If you guys have ideas, obviously this isn't a motor home or an RV or a van. So I don't have the running vehicle that's creating the power is separate from the trailer, of course. So that's kind of the, the setup that I, I've been leaning towards bringing the power back and doing that Anderson connection. If you guys have a similar setup and you you know know of a, a good way to do this, uh, let me know. I'm definitely interested because that's my next step. For now, it passed the first test. I'm really liking you know the setup, the way it's working, and seems to be doing a really good job. Seems to be doing what I wanted it to do. So uh, yeah, it, it definitely uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with it so far, and I'm excited to do my first little trip with it to see how it does a few days you know three four days in a row kind of thing and whether it can keep that battery topped up or whether maybe I need you know a bigger battery bank I only have one deep cycle battery there right now so I might have to go two batteries that's an option but yeah for now I'm going to test it out the way it is I'm going to figure out my power from the towing vehicle so that I can jam it with a pretty good charge when I'm driving and then I can pull into wherever I'm going with a cold fridge and a topped up battery and then hopefully the solar can carry me from there and I can stay off grid for a few days if I need to. Anyways, this is the first initial yeah, setup and run through. Everything works great. Uh, I definitely uh, you know, recommend the system so far, but I'm gonna put it through its paces and uh, I'll let you know if anything changes. All right guys, till the next one.